Hey everybody, it's me, Sean, and welcome to a new Let's Play. That's right, it's the third of our new Let's Plays this week. It's a crazy week for me here at uh, Vanilla PC Strategy. Doesn't matter though, it's Empires of the Undergrowth, a new game. I am really excited about this one. I'm going to be honest, this one is the one that caught me most by surprise. Although I really like the... Uh, really like drift driftland as well so uh but uh empires of the undergrowth is a lot of fun now this is an ant simulator ant colony simulator and it's a real-time strategy game which i'm not very good at that type of game but i am really enjoying this so far now i've played quite a bit of this uh because i've had it for about a week um, and uh, there's been an embargo on, but the embargo is up, and it is time to get a plan. So we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to start our formicarium. Formicarium? I don't know. But anyways, it's our little sand. That's this thing right here, the, uh, the ant uh, thing. So we're going to start up a new one, and it's going to be the um, vanilla colony, because I can't really think of a good name. Red, blue, green, or yellow. Let's go ahead and go with red this time, and uh, let's get started. So, there'll be little narrators talking us along, maybe. Ah, I see the queen has taken well to her new home. It's it's fascinating. She has already started to spawn. Incredible, really, that we found such a healthy specimen. How long until we can expect to see interspecies polymorphism? We should be patient and allow the colony to grow first. I've placed food nearby. Then we will introduce the Formica Fusca and observe the reaction. Excellent. Keep me updated on their progress. All right, I'm not sure what they meant by interspecies, whatever, but uh, when you start out, you go ahead and you dig up, and there's this food down here. Right here, this is our food capacity. We can hold up to 70. We have zero royal jelly. We have 36 uh, territory slots, which we will use to expand our territory, obviously. We have seven of seven workers. Um, you start out with seven worker uh, spots already set up here. That's where our queen is living on top of that. And we have zero soldiers, and we'll get to that stuff here soon. So, uh, yep, this is our formicarium. We'll use this for quests. We have uh, notifications that will drop down. Uh, if an ant sees food, it'll pick it up and bring it back to the colony. So you can see that it can be spent on tile improvements. To expand your colony, we're going to need space with no tools selected, blah, blah, blah. You can expand out thing. A lot of tool tips on this. Now that I have some resources, I spilled some new workers. Select the nurseries tab from the bottom and uh, select the worker. Great. Okay, so... Uh, we've got this little path that will lead us. This leads up to the outside. We haven't opened it up yet, but that is what it does. So we're going to go ahead and build a uh, little worker area in here. So we go to our brood creep menu, and there we have a worker ant nursery tile. And so we're going to select that, and we're going to lay down some worker spots. So those cost 20 each, and you can see our food dropping down a little bit as we build it and uh, we'll close that out any idle worker may bring a queen to a nursery tile yep so those are going to turn into some worker ants ants receive a speed penalty when they walk on a nursery tile you want to build them in closed off rooms a pheromone so here so i uh Here's the three ants that I just planted. That's those three. You can see it highlights their nest segments. And here's our pheromone marker. So if I take this and I click right there, all the ants in this group will head towards that marker. So that's a good way to direct your ants where to go. Um, uh, the left select level select dialog. From here you can see the available challenges. So if we go to here... You can see there, there are four challenges and two, well, there are four scenarios and two challenges, right? Uh, and so you work through the different scenarios. Now I've played through, not in this game, but in my other game, I played through these two, the this challenge and this scenario. But I still haven't played this ladybug scenario yet, nor have I played the final challenge. But we're going to go ahead and play through those. So I'm going to close that off. 
and um, work as nest group do jobs around the nest. Ah, that's this one right here. Uh, includes digging, carrying eggs, and building tile improvements. So you're always going to have these seven from your original thing. And I think you can add to that group. I'm not entirely sure. But you don't really want to. It'll, it'll make sense as we play along. So uh, we still have more food. I'm going to go ahead and actually expand a few more workers onto our uh, slot here. There we go. So this will expand up to seven workers. Now there are benefits to if you surround a tile, like tiles get adjacency bonuses. If we look here, you can see. So you see how these all have six of six? That means I can adjust, I can boost these up to level two. Now I can't do that in this scenario because it's the form and carry them, but we'll be able to do it later on. But uh, uh, there are bonuses to expanding out your thing. But let's go ahead and um, uh, resume. Let's go ahead and try the new home scenario. Now, I've tried a lot to beat this on the hard difficulty, but you know what? We'll give it one more shot. We'll see if I can beat it on hard difficulty. I couldn't do it on hard. This is, in my opinion, this is the hardest scenario of them all. Uh, but we'll go ahead and give this one a shot on hard. That really makes for the, uh, the creatures we're going to be fighting, it makes them a lot more difficult. Uh, so uh, the start is pretty straightforward. You can see Fusker's queen has set up home beneath a rotting log. She is fat and vulnerable. Her first brood will need to move quickly if the colony is to survive. Their priority now is to find food, and there is plenty around. But there are other hungry creatures down here. The workers will need to be vigilant. The ants have encountered a pocket of woodworm. These defenseless weevil larvae will make an excellent meal for the colony. They will be butchered and carried off for processing. All right, so we start out with some easy food. Now, uh, in this scenario, I pretty much know what all the different little bunches of these the little exclamation points are, are monsters we're going to have to fight. Pretty familiar with what all of them are and kind of the right order that you want to bust them open in in order to uh, in order to basically be able to survive each stage. Uh, so we're going to start out, we're going to build up a little cluster of uh, worker ants. Um, uh, I believe this is a good spot. Let's see, I like to put a... You know what, maybe I will put our worker ants down in here. Usually I put our worker ants in here, but I think I might actually put our first batch of... Uh, fighter ants in there instead. So the black ants are your melee fighters. And so I'm going to set up a little... Uh, oh, I don't have enough food. They use a lot more food. They use 50. The worker ants use 20, and the black ants use 50. So, uh, But we have a lot of food kind of scattered around from all those little wood larvae that we have killed. Going to move our worker ants into slot 1, and then I can uh, tell the number one ants to go over there and they'll gather up that food and then I'm going to continue building up army ants and basically we need to build a little army to be able to go in and um, start attacking like we need to attack this little group there and then we'll attack that group and uh, anyways we'll expand out our um, area that we, we just need an army to kill off the little monsters in there it will make sense as we go along but as, as soon as we get up to 50 i'll build another one and then i'll build one more and then we'll have a little army of seven in our f group number two and if we gathered we still have a little bit of food down there to gather we've gathered almost all the food so far we might not actually get up to 50 again and i probably want to leave a little bit open because each one each time a uh, an ant is born, it uses a little bit of food there too. So I'm going to throw another worker down here to boost up that cluster. I think we've got enough in our, uh, we should have more than enough in our little army to uh, attack this cluster here. So I'm going to go ahead and open that area up. And this will have some little earworms in it, I believe, earwigs. They call them Devil's Coach Horse. The workers have uncovered carnivorous larvae of Ochipus olens, the devil's coach horse. They are born ready for combat. 
with powerful slicing mandibles for chopping up their prey. So I'm not really sure what however, I must undergo a final pupation before their armor is fully developed. Oh. If the ants are fast, they should be able to overwhelm these critters. Ah, these guys are tougher than I expected. To disturb the adults of these larvae, the outcome for the colony may not have been so fortunate. There we go. They must expand with caution. All right, so those guys are pretty tough, uh, but we managed to kill them. We did lose a few ants, unfortunately, so it costs a little bit of food to replace them. You do really want to be careful with your food, um, and um, eventually we're going to end up fighting the adult larvae of, or the adult. Uh, versions of those guys and uh, the adults are really tough um, so right now our food capacity is only 70 I'm actually going to expand our food capacity and we do that by building these food tiles and the food tiles cost five to build but they also get adjacency bonuses so like we can upgrade them like I can upgrade that one to level two and then that will give adjacency bonuses to all these so we'll be able to upgrade these to level two and suddenly we have a food capacity of uh, 230. So that's plenty of food capacity, I think. I've boosted it up higher in the past, but it's not really necessary to hold on. Like having a lot of um, a lot of uh, uh, capacity left over doesn't really help much of anything. There we go. Predators are loose in the nest. So we'll send our ants here to fight these guys. I like throwing in the level one um, creatures. I don't know how much that helps exactly, but I still end up doing it. I also, I really like the theme, the uh, uh, background music for this game. It's, it's pretty cool. All right, so thinking ahead here, what I kind of want to do is create a little central area where we can fight at, like in here. And then I, I kind of want to put a growing area over here and a growing area over here so we can surround our prey. Actually, I should probably try to connect it up to here, and maybe here, maybe over here. So I think I will put our second nest in over here is why I was kind of thinking about all that because I do want to get our second nest of of uh, army ants, of black ants growing over on this side. And it looks like we've gathered up all of our food from that battle. So we've got four creatures in that slot and we've got five in this slot. So we'll probably wanna take these four on. And once we take the four on, we can open up this food chamber. We should be able to get that food chamber as well and uh, get in quite a bit of growth with those. Actually, I'm gonna, uh, let's see. So we have one, two, and I think three is gonna be here. Now, I think I'm gonna maybe put three over here. Kind of make our main fighting area here. Uh, the reason this is important is because as as you're fighting the larger battles, your uh, your creatures as they as they as they get killed, the new ones will get born to replace them, and so you kind of want to have your fighting near where your creatures are getting born at, so they can kind of replace the previous ones that are dead. And um, uh, oh, I'm not doing so well on this one. I might have gotten into that too early. And if they can come in from all sides and kind of surround the uh, surround the bad guys, that is definitely a good thing. Ah, good. All right. Well, that was a lot closer fight than I was expecting. Ah, it's because I don't have our new guys coming in here. There we are. This colony must remain small for now. All right. So that was a, that was a tough fight, but we managed to pull through. I don't really need to worry about any of those things anymore. I'm gonna click on another army ant. Oh, really? We have no. How do we only have forty food while we have those? Uh, we have those those guys right there.
Well, it doesn't seem like we got any food from... I, we must have used it when when they um, repopulated. But we'll get a lot of food from, from these little clusters here. Now, these guys don't... So they don't fight you or anything. They just take time to, to to kill them all. But there's a bunch of food between these two little groups here, and uh, we'll be able to build up our build up our armies with the food from those, and maybe start upgrading some of our. The level two units are a lot tougher than the level one units, and then the level three units are, are even tougher still. But, you know, there's a lot of benefit in having numbers. So it's kind of... Usually I end up with about 27, 28 army ants. And um, uh, try to get most of them to level 2. These wood lice provide a lot of food. I'm not quite sure now that I've opened up this slot. Like, that's, I'm not really going to be able. To, I guess I could use. Uh, I want to have some sort of decoy to try to to draw the bad guys into here where we can fight. Usually, I use the the worker ants to serve as the decoy to draw in the uh, the bad guys onto the. You know what I mean? Like the uh, the. Uh, uh, fighting area of my choosing. I'm gonna go ahead and expand out this area and throw in a few more workers down here. And I probably want to go ahead and upgrade some of these workers as well. Yeah, I don't want to burn through all my food because I do want to have enough food left over so that um, as we uh, lose workers in, in the next battles we're still able to uh, repopulate. But like I said, these wood lice will provide a lot of food as the ants come and tear them apart and carry the, carry the food back. One, like probably the only complaint I have about this game is that you can't save during the uh, missions like this. So, uh, I'm going to have to rec not record. Well, I am going to have to record uh, this entire mission in one setting. Not food to feed the new brood. Even though, you know, uh, it's going to take two episodes worth of time to, to get through this mission. Um, so it's kind of a drag because the first time I played it, I had I had to go somewhere. So I played for about 20 minutes and then it's like, oh, I got to run. And I thought it would just automatically save because like when you go here, there's no option to save it. Um, but, uh, it didn't, <laughs> and I lost all my work from the very first one. Um, so that was too bad, but I think, I think we'll be okay. And, um, you know, uh, I, there's no guarantee that we're going to beat this mission, by the way, uh, just, just to, just to be clear to everybody, uh, I haven't been able to beat this on hard difficulty yet, and just because I have some time in this, I don't know that I'm going to be able to beat it on hard difficulty this time around either. Uh, this is a tough game in a lot of ways. So here I'm going to start working towards this one, and I'm, I'm going to see if we can get our uh, attacking from both sides plan going here. Because if you can surround the bad guys, you definitely have a uh, better chance of uh, being able to defeat them. Uh, I thought that was going to open. I thought those were both going to open into their area, but... Predators are loose in the nest. The larvae must be protected. So here we're surrounding them, and, and so that kind of draws them into two groups. So it does, and then here it's even easier to attack them from behind. So yeah, we didn't lose. We lost a couple of ants there, but not as many as we had in the previous fights. 
All right, food stores are full, but I want to start working on our fourth cluster of, and I think I wanted to put them over, over. I don't want to put them in there because the, although can I, yeah, these, you can't dig through these ones. So I think I want to make kind of the main fighting chamber in here. It doesn't cost anything to dig out stuff in the missions. In the formicarium it does, but in the missions it's it's simple. So I think I'm going to make our fourth chamber in here. And then this will be kind of our main fighting area in here. All right, so we've uh, we're full on food. I want to start up another ant black ant group. We've got a little more food coming in, and then we will open up this area, fight those guys. Next up will be this cluster, and then we can creep along this wall and open up this little food burrow, and continue upgrading our. Uh, Mostly just upgrading our army ants. Get a few more in this cluster here. Looks like we've gathered all the food that's going to be available on this one. Going to go ahead and try this uh, multi multi directional approach on this as well. Kind of hard to tell. Oh, well, no, I want two down there. It's kind of hard to tell where the the inner chamber starts. I think we've got the right spots there. So, yeah. Dang it. There we go. So, it works pretty well when you when you come in like that. Although we did lose quite a few units on that one. Looks like we lost like four. Oh, and I didn't even have our new army in there. All right. Well, guys, we're off to a pretty good start. And um, we've got a lot of fighting to come up in the next. Actually, we might be able to get this this fight out of the way before the uh, before the episode ends. But we have a lot of fighting coming up in the next episode. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up that spot as well. What do we have here? Two, four, six, eight. And we have six in this one, so I definitely want to go for this one next. It would be nice if I could come around this way, but I think we'd open up that chamber first. So we won't be able to do that. Um... Yeah, so anyways, uh, this is Empires of the Undergrowth. Uh, I hope you uh, have enjoyed this episode, and, and uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if this is your first time checking out my channel, maybe take a look at some of the other videos I do, and I hope you'll consider subscribing. Uh, we have a lot of fun here. I play a lot of different kind of games. You can see those. It's pretty easy. Uh, if you've enjoyed watching this video, you should click the like button down below and maybe leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what you have to say. This game will be available on Steam, I believe, tomorrow, the day after this video posts. Otherwise, it's already available. Uh, you definitely should check it out. It's going to be an early access. They are going to be adding a lot of content and other new stuff to the game. Uh, there will be a link in the description below. Uh, thank you so much for watching, everybody. We'll have another episode up real soon. I'll see you then. Bye!